Guys, it's June 2nd, 2013. This was posted today in Activist Post, and I will link below to the article. And I also hope that everybody is trying their best to circulate those videos that you see, or the information that you read, learn about, that you're trying to circulate it the best you can to others to inform them. Nearly 40 million B Holocaust in Canada. Imagine you own and run an all-natural sweetener factory. You walk into work and all the employees are sprawled out dead on the floors over railings in the vats. They've been gassed, poisoned. Your immune system is slightly stronger, so you aren't as affected. Now imagine you have tens of millions of employees and they run farms on the side. That city and the metropolitan areas would be devastated. And it happens in other cities and other countries simultaneously for seven years. Think of the headlines and the conclusions. The words terror attack would be tossed about, but they aren't there. The gravity is downplayed to protect corporate interests and an agenda and an agenda that must destroy the ecology, environment and the food supply to usher in a new era that requires complete debilitating dependence. If you think this refrain sounds overdramatic, think again. It's that important for the food supply, ecology, and even the economy that these co-creators be able to survive. Recently, 25 to 50,000 bees in Oregon dropped dead with sudden strong evidence pointing to a toxic spray used in trees. The UK just witnessed their biggest bee loss yet and it's been suggested that the U.S. lost 50% of its bee population in the last year, affecting both crops and prices. Now we see a massive loss with our neighbors up north, up north in Canada. David Shewitt runs Shewitt's Saugeen Honey near Elwood, Ottawa, Canada, and witnessed a devastating loss of 600 hives, totaling nearly 40 million bees. What happened around the same time? A nearby cornfield was planted. Bingo. The group of chemical pesticides called neonicotinoids include chemicals produced by Bayer Crop Science and Sagenta. Has everything to do with this, as seeds, especially genetically mo modified corn, are treated before planting. These chemicals have been found in soil, plants, pollen, even in the end product of high fructose corn syrup, which is often fed to bees as cheap food to replace the honey they would have survived on. Bees get thirsty too, and there is footage that proves when they drink water droplets from treated plants, they can die of neurotoxicity within 25 minutes. Later, uh, I'm sorry, lately, Shewitt has had to replace queen bees every few months instead of every few years because they die so often. It is getting more difficult to maintain a living keeping bees. Some are, talk, some are taking to keeping bees in an effort to simply help replenish them. It's surprisingly easy to get started and actually better for the bees when city residents try it. Sewitt said, once the corn started to get planted, our bees died by the millions. The Ontario Ministry of Agriculture and Food Rural Affairs tells me to have faith. Well, I think it's criminal what is happening, and it's hard to have faith if it doesn't look like they are going to do anything anyway. Erica Shewitt said, I would say you could call this a bee holocaust. Amafra is sitting on results from testing the bees. Erica believes the samples will prove what scientists already know and have repeatedly concluded about the link between insect insecticides and die-offs. Their bees were thriving through the winter until the spring planting. She pointed out that pesticide dust from the seed treatment is in the air. Neonicotinoids have a half-life of 120 days, but can stay in the soil and water for years. She wonders what they must be doing to us. She has a point. Insecticides have been linked to human cancer rates again. 
It's not just Shuit, though, experiencing the loss. Nearby growers Nathan Carey and Gary Kenny lost bees this spring and point to insecticides. Kenny lost eight of his 10 hives after corn planting in adjacent fields. Terry feels like everyone has something at stake with this growing problem. Some of them have taken to holding public workshops to discuss the issue and solutions as a system that has taken so long to topple over isn't experiencing an immediate redress or relief. A two year EU ban on neonicotinoids begins on December 1 of this year. Some of the workshop solutions were discussed here and mentioned that other species such as sweet bees, squash bees, leaf cutter bees, which pollinate alfalfa, bumblebees, some moths, and many others are dying from pesticides, as well as the use of all heavily doused genetically modified crops. Butterflies, fish, birds, and frogs also top the list for loss for lost habitat likely caused by pesticides. All of the lettering in red are links to other articles. So when he, when I read some of the workshop solutions were discussed here, just press on here to find out what other solutions were discussed. Companies like Bayer and Sagenta take great efforts to protect their billion dollar industries. Same with biotech giants like Monsanto and DuPont who rely on the idea of pesticides being safe to uphold the use of their genetically modified crops. They are not just going to give up all give all that up to help some bees even though they claim to help with world hunger. Yet it is morbidly ironic that they are aiding in killing off the biggest co-creators of the world's food supply. And this loss <clears throat> And this loss, which took years to get going, was anticipated. Researchers have already launched robotic robo-bee pollinators. Think, research funds and patents. Large-scale farmers complain that pesticide bans leave them with few options. That is truly unfortunate. However, they are already having to hire pollinator help as it is. Think of what it will cost them to have to use robo-bees if they even can. The industry heads downplay the gravity and continue to claim that nothing is wrong, yet they cast blame on their customers, the farmers, saying they use the products wrong, and also the media, scientists, and activists for allegedly causing undue harm, undue alarm, sorry. Over the years, their solution has been to introduce a safer chemical and regulatory agencies listened. It's too late for another round of that. Beekeepers see the reality firsthand of losing their hard work and creations within hours. They never know what they might find when they check their hives or if their little ones have taken their last flight. And the more we remain silent and do nothing about what is happening, and what is happening is that our FDA, our USDA, or US, yeah, USDA. That is right, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the more we let these people do whatever the hell they want. Just recently, the FDA again lifted the limit for pesticide use so Monsanto can go out and do and douse even greater, greater levels of pesticide, insecticides on our food supply. What they are doing is 100% completely, utterly, absolutely criminal and we're letting them do it. Unfortunately, it's overwhelming when you have every institution now behaving collective, collectively as criminals to destroy our food supply, destroy our health so that they can make a profit, so that they can have full control. And we're letting this happen. 
That's a big wow. That's a real big wow.